Hey, welcome back everybody to your favorite social anxiety let's play gaming channel. <laughs> it's probably true if you think about it. How many other social anxiety let's play gaming channels do you know? And if you know them, tell me because I want to watch them too. <laughs> Um, I wonder if there's literally any other I mean I don't mean to be like pretentious but like because I want to know if there's any other channel on YouTube that does exactly what I'm doing there are a let's play channel that just talks about social anxiety or anxiety like at all I wonder I, I don't I've never found it it's, m most let's play channels or comedy. Um, I am obviously not a comedy channel. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder, yeah, if there's just like, I don't know. It'd be interesting to find something like that. But obviously there's not a huge, probably not a huge market for it. I mean, I think if you're pretty charismatic, you can get away with like anything, but... Um, and I'm not the most charismatic person in the world, but I blame my microphone for that. If I had a better microphone and like, you could hear me, like sometimes you listen to somebody and they're, you're just kind of charismatic ties by their production value. <laughs> and they're like, they have like a nice hair and you can hear them and see them really well. And you're just like, oh, I might as well watch this video. This guy looks like I should be watching him um, I started watching a new channel that's kind of like that it's called um, they mentioned it in the besties group it's called cinema therapy where a therapist and a movie maker watch movies and they're like it's like therapist reacts to beauty and the beast something like that um, but like they have like a really high production value and like multiple cameras and they have this set like in a movie theater and they're eating popcorn and like their their hair is like, like uh, they're probably like wearing makeup too <laughs> it's like oh i should be watching these people but then you watch a video like this and you see like my pale skin and my eye bags and you're like i don't feel comfortable watching this person <laughs> um Whoa, 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 okay. What was my note I was going to talk about? Oh, just another note about, I gotta stop talking about Sadie, God, or in Dalton. This whole week has been the Sadie and Dalton show. Like, there, I mean, for good or for bad, like, if, if you know me, I'm going to talk about you because I, you're like one of the three people that I know, so what else am I going to talk about? <laughs> um... I've been uh, I've been really into cult stuff lately. So, like how do cult of personalities develop and um, like the personality of cult leaders, that's kind of like a synonymous whatever, but like, uh, how do they act? Because this there's a group, we're in a group of like 40 people could very easily be a cult. That's, that's how they develop. Like you start small with a very charismatic leader who kind of love bombs you, right? Um, and they meet you when you're at a low point. So far, checking all the boxes, I was at a low point um, with my social anxiety. When I joined this group like last year, uh, what are the other things I mentioned? Charismatic leader. She has a podcast, and uh, it's not the biggest podcast in the world, but like it's, I like it. It's good. <laughs> um, she is charismatic. I feel like, especially to someone with social anxiety, because she has social anxiety, and she has like this nice family, and she has all these nice pictures, and it's like. Oh, look at me. You you can have the perfect life like me. Um, 
she could very easily take advantage of the people that follow her. Because I'm listening to this uh, podcast called Indoctrination. Every single week, this podcast has been around for like um, three years or something. And every single week, she has a new person who's been in a cult on the podcast. There are so many cults. Um, And a lot of them are like, yeah, just like a group of 20 people. And then all of a sudden, you realize like you're living in this commune and like you can't leave and you're like wait how did I get into this (laughs) um yeah a big a big point is like and a big point that they make on that show is like anybody can be in a cult but they kind of have to meet you at a specific point in your life like you have to be at a low point like right now well maybe Um, but, like, if you're doing well, you're probably not going to be susceptible to a cult, but, like, if you just got divorced or, like, someone, like, your mom died or something, and you're looking for purpose or you're looking for any kind of community, a cult can get you pretty good. And, um, so I never really... I mean, be, I, I guess just, like, because I'm listening to this podcast so much, I'm just like, well, this could be a cult. Um, I've never had to, like, if I hadn't listened to this podcast, I would never have, like, that, like, feeler up of, like, oh, this is a cult, this is a cult. Because it, it doesn't really feel anything. But that's what I mean. That's what they always say. Like, oh, it didn't feel like a cult. The next thing you know, I'm giving my firstborn daughter to the 90-year-old profit (laughs) sure you can have my daughter you can marry my daughter when she's 12 what's happening but it's not a cult (laughs) um there aren't a lot of female cult leaders though which is interesting um the the most that will happen is like there will be a man and a woman like a married cult leader but it's never really like a woman cult leader so that's one thing that's like well probably safe but um maybe sadie could do it she could break the glass ceiling of cult leaders no i mean the point of this is that at every top opportunity where i could see like um that happening i see sadie like making an effort and the and the other people in the group making an effort to be like let's be good about this thing (laughs) i don't know there was um something really specific happened like last week or somebody left a comment in the group where they were being a little bit negative and um So, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of reactions. I'm trying to think. Like, in a cult, um, one thing that would ob- they would obviously do, that a lot of cults do, is, like, suppress negativity. Um, like, don't be negative about anything. Um, and they kind of turn it back on you like if you're being negative like focus on you especially if they're being negative about something in the group which is actually what kind of happened they're like oh like i had like a bad experience in this group or something in a cult they would redirect that back at you and say what are you doing wrong like why are you feeling bad and why is it your fault they would never the cult can never be wrong. Um, the cult can never change the rules. They can never be different. Cults can't be fluid, really, um, because cults are mostly about the person at the top having power. 
And so if there's fluidity, then the person loses that power. Um, so this person in the group was being a little bit negative about the group and being like, oh, this group, this something in this group happened that I didn't like or whatever. And I'm like, ew, let's see what happens. Let's see how the people respond. And I actually responded to that comment, which I don't really respond to a lot of comments. Um, I don't want to read it. I kind of want to read it, but like I, <laughs> I shouldn't because it's obviously very personal to what the person said. Um, and I'm trying to be as vague as possible. And I won't say what Sadie said or what anybody else said either. But the way they reacted and commented to that person was very supportive of their feelings and validating of their feelings, not redirecting, um, uh, I feel like, say, like saying things like, um, like if there's anything we can change to, to, to suit, like to suit this better, like we should talk about it and like. I, I've noticed like a lot of the, the people in the group are very open to changes like yeah let's change stuff because like we're people and we don't know what we're doing this isn't a religion we don't have a god um, I mean that's the thing is like most cults are like religious but don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me oh <laughs> They don't always have to start that way. There are some like secular cults where um, they kind of morph into cults just because the leader is so charismatic and they're just like, oh, like we just have to, you're perfect and we have to follow everything you do. Um, I mean, most cults I feel like do have a religious framework to fall back on, but that's kind of the easy way out because then the the prophet, the person at the top, can always just say, like, God told me. God told me this stuff. Like, we don't want to argue with God. Take it up with him. Um, so that's kind of like the easy way to do a cult, is to just be like, oh, yeah, I'm the prophet. God talks to me, and he tells me what you all should do. <laughs> um, but there are definitely cults that... Uh, are not super religious but then they kind of turn into like a pseudo religious like they always kind of like morph into that i feel like um okay this lady is walking towards me and it's seven o'clock at night so she can see in here because it's dark out okay i feel like we just made eye contact i'm gonna <laughs> oh god I'm going to end. Oh, we're over. We're over time. Okay, i got to end and close the blinds. <laughs> oh, God. The lady across the street looked at me. Ooh, that's a weird shadow. I don't like that. Oh, and I hate when the color changes. There's, a, there's, a, there's like a constant color. See? Right there. There's like a constant color shift. I like it when it makes my face redder. Ooh, I don't like that one. Make my face red. I don't like when it makes it pale and I look like uh, Quasimodo. I didn't talk about Quasimodo that much this week, but I like the book. Oh no, where am I going? Uh, right, right, right. You are deformed. Okay, see ya, bye.